and that it will also ensure what supplies to its customers in uh, in line with the Nigerian standard of drinking water quality. And this is very, also very, very important. And I believe that with this, with this bill now, uh, issues of uh, vandalism of uh, pipeline water will be uh, will be put to rest. Uh, recently, government will award contracts to companies in the state, and in the course of doing that construction, construction, a lot of uh, water uh, recirculation lines will have been damaged, and uh, this would also ensure that if you do any road project and you find out you destroy water uh, recirculation areas, the company will have to be held responsible to fix them back. It is um, something that we need to encourage. And of course, um, uh, Ekero vaccine, all these um, uh, borehole water drillers that are not <coughs> licensed to drill borehole would, would, would put to rest. All right. Let, so let, what let, let me pause you there, uh, Mr. Sora, and, and quickly ask, what, what are the implications if the governor, Governor Odom Emanuel, signs this bill into law? How would the average Aquibum person benefit from the bill when implemented? Yeah, there is a lot that Aquibum people will benefit. It's not, it's not all areas in the state that has clean water to drink. And it is to say that the Aquarium State Water Corporation will be commercially viable. What well, you want well, back the word commercial, commercial. And you know, a lot of people now don't even drink from their boreholes. Everybody is buying pure water or buying uh, bottled water. So for the company to be commercially viable, they have to ensure that they provide water everywhere all over the state. <laughs> it is only those in the um, urban area. Most people in the rural area don't have clean water to do. And this can be this also can be taken under a private um, um, partnership with any company. So I believe that appointment people will benefit a whole lot if this bill is signed into law by his excellency the governor. All apart right. from that apart from that I have also mentioned that uh, we are losing a whole lot of money from uh, federal government because of the fact that this bill was out of ground. There are statutory donations, monies that are supposed to be uh, coming to acquire the state for the purposes of expanding um, uh, drinking water to acquire people or making a um, a, a major water project for five said for five people but because of this bill that was lacking and we are unable to get those fundings of course from also international donor agencies like uh, EU and um, a whole lot of them etc that they are also supposed to give us because of the fact that we have an agreement Federal government has an agreement with international donors agency that's supposed to also give us some assistance in um, uh, providing water in a private state. So we have not been able to get um, this assistance because this time the government is asking them for assistance on behalf of the people. They said that a private state does not have the relevant law that will back up what they will come and do. Or what donation, whatever donation they will give to uh, Akwaibu State government on behalf of the people of Akwaibu State. So I think it is very, very important. And you know, recognition of inputs and various relevant professional integration of their skills of, you know, uh, borehole drillers, a lot of people will also have to benefit from it. I think um, it has a whole lot of. Uh, benefits that will come to acquire instead. All right, uh, Mr. Osara, we'll ask you one more question, but that will be after we take a short break to take our news on the hour. So please stay on the line. We'll be back to you shortly.
All right, glad to know you're still with us. This is the People's Parliament, and uh, so far it's been a wonderful plenary session this morning. We'll quickly uh, wrap it up on our conversation with the Honorable Usaro Panusaro. Good morning, sir, once again. Good morning. All right, so quickly before we let you go, one of the in-house parliamentarians has a question for you, so fire on, sir. Uh, good morning, Honorable. Uh, my name is Patrick Edeke. Uh, please, uh, Honorable, uh, what you guys are doing is commendable. Uh, it shows that uh, the legislator and the executive are in tandem in providing uh, good lives for the people of Akwaibu State, that and that is commendable. The, the phone is far from you. I can't I hardly hear you. Can you hear me now, sir? Yes, I can hear you. Sir. Yeah, so um, I was saying, the question is this. We have, we have um, people in Akwaibu State over time have been providing waters for themselves in the guise of uh, boreholes being drilled in their places of uh, abode, their houses and co. Now, this bill, what the question is this, is it, is, is it going to make it compulsory that every, every house must have a pipeline from the water service, aquarium water service? That's number one. Number two, what happens to those who are who want to drill their own water in the guise of having their boreholes in their houses without connecting to the water service? Well, I think. Uh, let me thank you for the question. I only from law because I'm a lawmaker. The law is giving the powers to those people in the power sectors, I mean the water sectors, will have absolute control of um, water regulation, provision of water, and also look into whatever business anybody is doing on that water. And uh, they also have, like I said, that a water, water company is not going to be started with that responsibility of providing water to Akwaibun people. If they want to start from the urban area, that is going to be the why that is what the law has given them the powers to do. If they want to move to the rural area, the laws have also given them powers to do that. And uh, for those that don't have water in their houses, the, they they already proficient, but maybe government sometimes do not fund those uh, uh, those water uh, construction very very well. There's only there's there's already a water provision for you as an urban area, but it has not been functional because of poor funding by government. And one of the things the water bills has given the water corporation company that is for them to be able to source for funding to be able to maintain the facility. In maintaining the facility, they can now go into reticulation. There's already a reticulation line in a Bible state. But it has to be reactivated because of uh, maintenance issues. And that is to say that a Bible water corporation will now bring water to your house. There are still some houses that are still benefiting from a Bible water corporation. Companies water reticulation in a Bible state today. Because of the inability of government to fund it, they have not been able to expand that business of giving you water and you pay water rent. I mean, you buy water from them. Just like uh, Power Holding. Power Holding is a private company. We are trying to make it a kind of a privatized company that can also generate revenue for the state and also fund themselves. So for those people that already have poor goals in their houses, there is a provision in the law that we have said that the, the commission is given the powers to make administrative uh, policies on how they can control the excessive drillings of boreholes. Some boreholes do not be standard. Some are being done poorly. That's why you see a lot of people, even when you have boreholes in your house, people are still buying pure water and bottled water. They can't drink it. But once the, this water from a private water corporation company comes to your house, you can drink that water directly because it will be a well-treated water. And I believe that for those that already drill boreholes in your house, 
it's going to be a recheck of what you have done, whether it is up to standard. I don't even understand what I'm saying. Yes, we, we totally understand. But but let, let me quickly take a pause there because we are running out of time. Uh, before another parliamentarian asks you this, uh, his own question, I'd like to know what would be the financial implication of, of these uh, issues that you've mentioned, especially for persons who have already dug their borehole and would need to undergo some science, sort of uh, supervision from the state water company. What, what would be the financial implications like? I... I, I financial implication on what aspect please well the aquarium state with the aquarium state water company have to charge persons who have already docked their own borehole to ensure that maybe they get step up to standard and then for those who will be coming on board newly what would be the financial implications like no 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 they're, 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 there will be the, the law has given a water water corporation company a, the power before any decision is taken. There will be a those that don't have, or those that have, and for those that don't have. Sometimes they even me that have for who give a five percent water corporation company want to keep abandoned by boreholes and go for the pure water because that is going to be treatable because it is treatable all right so, so that's not what i'm saying i understand so the next question you'll be hearing will come from parliamentarian franklin itself so go ahead good morning honorable uh <clears throat> my name is franklin is franklin you're yes. not playing golf today <laughs> <laughs> i will take on you tomorrow at the kitty keep my money for me at the kitty i will go i will take all your money at the golf course <laughs> I will give you. I will give you three ups. Uh, all your money will just go. Said, I know that laws are made progressively, not uh, retrogressively. For those who have made their boreholes already before the passage of the bill, I don't think the law will be caught up with them. I, in my own view, I know that the law will take effect from the date it is signed into law. Henceforth, any person who wants to drill borehole will now recourse to the water resources company, water water company. But in my own thinking, those who have made their boreholes before the law is signing, the bill is signed into law, will not have any penalty or anything to do with the law. I think so because if you now say those who have made their boreholes for like three, four years ago to come back for the law to now be, be having effect on them, it will be like having making a law that is now going backward, retrogressively, and that will bring so many litigations for the state government and for the water companies. That's my own thinking. I don't have not seen the bill as passed. I saw it when we had the public hearing. I have not seen the, the, the version that has been passed for me to look at it and look at the content that are in it. But I know that the laws are made for progressive purposes, not to go back to what has passed before it is being signed into law. That's my own view. Okay, now, um, to add to that, I don't think the law has made any any provision for for those that uh, own small holes now to pay for any amount of money or for those that is coming to drill new small holes to pay for money. The law has not made that such provision. What is important to us is that whatever thing you do under the law, it must meet the standards. We are talking about meeting the standard. Where, but even when you have your private borehole, you can drink that water. Because this is what has caused a lot of uh, uh, the diseases all over the state. And they like like the issue of defecation. You know, issue of defecation. The law does not. Even on the water issue, the law does not say that you must pay before you drill borehole. But the law is only giving them the powers that before you do that, you must get clearance to do it. And that the law, the, the, the borehole driller will be given to you by recommendation by the commission. You understand what I'm saying? So that therefore means that borehole drillers in Aquibom State will have to register with the Aquibom State Water Company Limited. Yes, they are already. They are. They have also been. You have one minute remaining. 
a, a, a board with association, a member will have to be appointed to save in that commission. All right. Thank you so very much, Honorable, for giving us your time. We do appreciate you for coming on the plenary this morning. Thank you. Do have a nice day, sir. You too, bye. <coughs> so that has been Right Honorable Usara Panuso, House Committee Chairman on the water resources and public utility in Aquabum State. And it's been a wonderful time having that conversations with him. And yes, parliamentarians, your calls have started calling him. So let me just kick start with you. Hello, good morning. Welcome to the People's Parliament. Hello, good morning. Yes, go ahead. The floor is yours. Oh, sorry, we lost that call. And yes, uh, let's quickly look at some of the comments we have on the social media before we come back to the floor of the house. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, Parliamentarian. Go ahead. The floor is yours. Yes, uh, Mr. Speaker, when we talk about the water bill, and the commissioner was telling us that that the borehole, maybe if I want to drill a borehole now, that the government will give approval so that the people will be drinking that water. This is just a bit by imagination. Because people that have that kind of opportunity to live in the compound that, in fact, the, the borehole, so it means that there are people that are not drinking borehole water. That is what I just understand clearly from what he has just said. Ah. And the thing is not affecting anybody. So please, when they want to come with a bill, let them come with a bill that we go. Before, before I used to see public pump running. But today, that kind of thing has diminished from this uh, uh, environment. We don't see public or let's say so maybe them they are happy. But they come on the street and I don't have any other water I get to drink apart from bowl. But uh, now I have come to understand that there are people that don't even drink bowl water. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, parliamentarians, for joining us. Indeed, uh, there are a lot of persons who do not drink from the borehole, the drill, because it doesn't meet up to the standard of drinking as far as uh, drinking water standard is concerned. Hello, good morning. Welcome to the People's Parliament. Good morning, Mr. President. Mr. Speaker, I beg your pardon. Go ahead. The floor is yours. What I'm trying to say in terms of the water bills that are quite the government intends to, to establish I really believe that government has a lot of things to do. I'm with them by name, calling from the town. Government has a lot of things to do, and the poor markets are suffering a lot. I believe set up as assembly is supposed to have um, over, um, over, uh, oversight on the deploration of roads and also payment of the gratuity to the to those people that they need to, uh, to, to pay for, and a lot of people might to raise. For them to introduce that bill is going to cause a lot of havoc to the poor people. And I believe the status of assembly has failed us, and the government has failed us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Parliamentarian, for joining us. We appreciate you this morning. Hello, good morning. Welcome to the People's Parliament. Good morning, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, the guests in the studio. Please, I want to lay a complaint to you. Please allow me to remain anonymous. If my word is to say to you, not to throw it away. There is what I do see as terrorist organization in the general government area of a five state, Nigeria. Here, we have the terrorist organization called Go. They are disturbing people too much in these villages around Utilobio uh, here and many parts of uh, Ibionigo, even uh, spreading to Ikono. That is stopping, they are terrorizing, using a full masquerade, uh, catching people, disturbing people, disposing people for, uh, of uh, their uh, this properties of money. So we are suffering in this very area that they, because of this uh, full masquerade, the, what they call a coup, the terrorist organization they are. They do not dis allow people to go to their normal businesses freely. And you don't allow people to be moving around well. 
especially at Econokun or not, what a Kun or not, Econokun or not, and some other places like that. Please let it be known to the government and let the government take the drastic step because the uh, uh, Victor Chap administration banned them. But when the uh, Fabio came, he introduced all the uh, this thing, what they call traditional uh, organizations or so so to be uh, re uh, the organized. That's why they come up again. Because Victor Chap was a very good administrator and a very good manager of this very state. Thank you very much for having me. Take my word. God be with you. Thank you very much for bringing this to the floor of the plenary. We will definitely read back to you and, of course, uh, get more details and revert it to the appropriate authorities so that uh, the people of the area can be rescued. But quickly, I, I know parliamentarians would want to uh, jump at this. We, we know that um, sometime in, uh, I think, early 2020, 2006, 2007, 2003 or thereabout, we used to have a series of um, issues happening with the masquerades. They called them equal in our dialect. Uh, to the point that we had several incidents where masquerades would even chase people into the church and slaughter them. And then uh, that, that led to the architect of Victor Tass era putting a ban on the practice, especially within the uh, environment. And then shortly after that, like the, the parliamentarian had rightly mentioned, it was reintroduced. But there were limitations um, attributed to them, and, and there were times assigned to these masquerades to prove them. Now the problem is resurfacing. What do you think at this point in time the people of the area should do? I mean, there is a save our soul message out already, but on their own part, what can they possibly do for the time being? Uh, I, I think for me, uh, the masquerade thing has to do with culture. And uh, permit me to use this illustration the knife in the kitchen is arguably the most useful kitchen uh, utensil. And it's also the most dangerous, if not properly used so for me the introduction of the masquerade was to boost tourism and uh, preserve our cultural heritage but the abuse is what is bringing on all these uh, challenges as as it pertains right now so for For me, the people can not do that much because it will amount to them taking laws into their hands. And when the masses take laws into their hands, it, it's, it's anarchy. It brings about chaos. So I think the regulatory bodies, where this is where the government should come in. I mean, um, outright banning, I would not support outright banning because uh, we'll be losing our cultural heritage and inclination. We'll be losing some of our tourism capabilities and all whatnot. Because if you go around the other activities around the wall that brings people around they both for me Ipo is not bad because of the play it's a cultural play but when they abuse it to the extent of flogging people extorting people wielding dangerous weapons getting people slaughtered that is a, a no-no for me so the government should come in here with a very will their big ham, ham or whatever they call it and then the regulation should should come and those who are perpetrators of this dastard act not people who just celebrate the Ipo Fest festival for festivity sake those who are involved in extorting people in causing bodily harm to people should face the music they should be prosecuted as as appropriate indeed uh, those who who perpetrate this bodily harm should be prosecuted as appropriate but let, let let's move away from that as it was not part of a major can uh, i just add something to that conversation all right go ahead uh, you see when the urban attacks government placed a ban on the equal masculine activity i am a title holder in, in our tradition in video the two income title and i know what tradition is all about just like what patrick said i was among those who opposed the outright ban of equal masquerade i propose that there should be a regulation kind of there is no law that allows you to use your religion to obstruct other people's religion or belief or businesses if you are a believer in the Ekbo society, you don't have to obstruct those who are Christian, who believes in churches or church or Muslim or whatever activity that they believe. So when you do your business, your own religion and you allow it to obstruct other person's religion, you have infringed on the law. Automatically, you don't need any government to come and, you know, regulate it again. There is a law that set the limit to which you can operate or do your own business or your own religion. Once you violate that, that law, the police should arrest you. I have seen where police arrest Ekpo Masquerade in Oran, 
and took them to the police cell and detained them. And so it can be done anywhere. If any, if any Ekpo or whoever masquerade carry your mask on your face or whatever, you carry machete and you cause havoc or disrupt other people's movement or activities, police should arrest you and detain you and prosecute you. Simple as that. That's right. Indeed, police should arrest and prosecute, and those are and those are basically. I mean, the it's supposed to be a spectacle for us to That's watch. It. It's supposed to be for entertainment purposes. So when you abuse it, for me, I think it, the law should take its course. Indeed, the law should take its course. But let's let's quickly move away from that. The issue of national grid collapsing in Nigeria, especially within the last two years, 2021 and this year, has been one embarrassing situation. And recently, the Nigerian electricity company said over 52 percent of Nigerians who are electricity subscribers are currently using um, estimated bills and that means a lot of people get overcharged for the services they are being offered. I recall that here in our Kwaibom State we've had several issues of complaints coming from the people where they complain you would barely see a light given to you for one day and then at the end of the month you get as high as 12,000 naira bill to pay for lights that you really barely had seen throughout the month. And now we're talking about another collapse that is going to cause massive uh, 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 blackout across the nation. Now, now I, I'll come to you. The issue of power has significantly um, affected the way businesses are run in Nigeria. And recently you would understand that um, uh, the Bakers Association of Nigeria have also said they will be embarking on strike owing to the fact that the cost of doing business has significantly changed and they need help from the federal government. What is the way forward for the Nigerian electricity system? Every, every booming economy, every lively economy, every functional economy is a product of a functional power system. If your power system in your economy is down or in your state or country is down, your economy will suffer just like what is happening to us. And then what we are seeing right now is a visceral effect or symptoms of what is already happening. That is not the case. The case is this. We are a victim of our national politics. And I keep saying it the way it is. In Aquaibo State, look at Aquaibo State, we have the capacity to generate and distribute power. But we've been denied that uh, that ability and that our, our capacity by what I call the national politics. And now, what for me, I, I, what is what is national grid? States were, you know, Created in this in this in this country haphazardly that could not even cater for for their individual needs, not to talk of uh, uh, generating a sizable uh, IGR, but for political reasons, and that is why when you have uh, uh, um, when you have professional politicians who are who are not vision vision oriented, we have this kind of problems. For me, state should be any state that has the capacity to produce, to generate and distribute power should be allowed to generate and distribute power because. Our productivity in Aquabo State is being hampered by what are still termed the, the national politics, where you, you can only generate, but we cannot distribute. So the distribution com company determines where they take their power to. And doing that, you find out that our productivity in Aquabo State has, is limited. If you look at Aquabo State, I like to really use Aquabo State as a, a case study in whatever I say, because for me, charity begins at home. There are a couple of things that are working in this state, which in the national level is not working. Why? Because the man, the, the, we micromanage it here and do it effectively well. For instance, the aviation industry. As it stands in Nigeria right now, we've had a logo over time, a bit over two years now, but there are no airplanes on ground. But here we have a functional air, airline. Why am I saying this? Because at this level, at the subnational level, we are able to micro, micromanage it. If we have, if we are allowed this, uh, if the power generation and distribution is taken away from the exclusive list and states are allowed to generate and, and distribute their power, power as, as, as it pertains to them, we will not be having that problem we are having. So for me, the idea of national, national grid should even be, be expunged from, 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 uh, uh, from a lexicon and then allow states who can generate power and distribute power to do so on their own. And before you know it, just like the case of the refineries as well, if you have states who can, who can uh, uh, build refineries, who can maintain their refineries, they should be allowed to do so. And all this traumas we are going all through is as a result of the national politics that we play in this country which is detrimental to the development of this country as it stands so the the estimated bill will definitely be there because the right thing is not being done you and i know that if this state was allowed to generate their power and distribute their power we already have the metering company we will have meters in virtually every household in this state 
and because that will that will uh, inadvertently generate IGR for the state, and the state cannot joke with this IGR because it is the IGR you will use in running the state. So this national politics has seriously affected us. And then if you go back to the Bakers Association, Bakers are going on strike because of a high cost of production, uh, the war in Ukraine. We all know that Ukraine and Russia produce almost about 30 to 40 percent of the wheat that is used around the entire in the entire world. But this this calls for attention. Uh, the, former, the former administration of President Good Lord Jonathan introduced what we, the cassava bread. Now, Nigerian is known for producing very viable cassava. Why don't you revert to that policy? I don't see anything wrong in us eating cassava bread. If we begin to eat cassava bread, I think we won't worry ourselves about importing wheat and then having to have the issue of bakers going on strike. But I also, I also want to ask, is this strike for just the, the executive bakers? They are getting get, get people on the street. Would this is All right, we'll, we'll come back to that issue. But at, at this point in time, we take another short recess and head out to take the BBC Pigeon News. When we come back, we'll continue with the rest of the People's Parliament. Stay with us. Glad to know you're still with us. This is the People's Parliament on Planet Radio and is the Friday plenary session and uh, before we get to taking more calls from parliamentarians we jump to development on political court cases in Aquaibom state you will recall that one of the issues that is currently trending in Aquaibom political scenario happens to be the pastor moino certificate saga talking about the pdp flat bearer in Aquaibom state whose case is currently in court and uh, as at uh, the weekend the next time the case was was read in court report has it that Another plaintiff also asked the court to be joined in the suit, which is seeking for Pastor Umoino to not just present his certificate amongst all the issues. And then uh, the applicant's name, Etimakan, was seeking to join Akanakon and the eligibility of the suit. I will not have to go on through the different details, but then the essence is that they want the election nullify and uh, uh, the person of uh, Pastor Umoino uh, disqualified on grounds of the certificate. We also know that uh, Chief Okri uh, had lost his bid to stop Barrister Noidem's candidacy, talking about uh, the Federal High Court in New York, who had decided, struck out the case yesterday, um, filed by Chief Nibega Okri, challenging the victory of Barrister Emmanuel Noidem as the PDP candidate for Kwaibom Northwest Senatorial District seat in the 2023 general elections. Now, already the, the state politics is heated up with different court cases happening. Let me, let me kick start with you, Mr. Franklin. Already, we've not even started the 2023 general elections, and we are having different litigation processes instigated against different political aspirants. Going by the present situation, what, what do you think would likely play out in 2023 after the proper elections? You see, judiciary has been part of our, our democratic um, practices. Every year of election, you will have several litigations. You will have the court coming up to make pronouncements. Some of them are profound. Some of them are precedents. I, 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 I didn't expect anything less from what we are having today in Akwaibom. Um, the PDP has about four cases for the governorship seat currently trying to you know, um, upset the primaries that took place. That is the case of uh, Mr. James Enyema that he was unlawfully excluded from the ballot box that of um, the status of the delegates that voted, that is Friday Wook and others, which I learned, which I know that the Federal High Court, you know, had ruled and the other parties may be going to an appeal. The other one has to do with the, um, the issue of a Kanukun, challenging the certificate of Pastor Moino, and several other issues are coming up. The APC has their own uh, um, cup of tea where the candidates are in court you have two factions of the of the party with two offices, one at Ekbo Boat, one at Ekbo Road, the status of the uh, the, the, the governorship uh, seat of the candidate. INEC has insisted that the primaries that, that produced a Kanorofia, that the that INEC was not there to monitor it in line with the act. And then the other part, again, you have a Secretary Tainang, who is one of the candidates who has gone to court to align with INEC that, uh, that uh, uh, the, the party's candidate, a Kanorofia, should not be allowed to stand the primaries and then you have several other issues boiling up now all of these will culminate to what we will now have as the democracy in Aquaibom. this morning i was going through a report and i saw the way we are tearing ourselves apart and i became worried that 
Aquaman politics has become so heated like a war front. If you go to social media, you will see the way we are tearing ourselves apart. And I keep on asking ourselves, after election, what becomes of the state? Like I said this morning in my platform, I said, I fear for the security of the state that after election in, 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 in 2023, we might be having insecurity because the way we are hitting up the polity, we are fighting amongst ourselves, it's as if we are at war front. I think that we should allow democracy to be such that only um, the process will be smooth, that voters will go and cast their vote and the, the minas will emerge. Again, why do we have these litigations and this uh, uh, do or die fight or uh, affair? It's because I think that it's because we have been doing politics of winner takes it all. And I asked before in the sister program, I said, I have never seen where a winner emerge and bring in the other part candidates and they form a government of unity in the state. Perhaps this is why we are having this must win. I must be the winner. Otherwise, why all this fight? We are all of one stock. And our interest is governance of the state. If our interest is to give good governance, we should all align ourselves and allow one person to emerge one governor. We have just one seat as a governor. All these litigations will hit up the causing distraction. Now, currently, the government is distracted. The policy is heated up. Insecurity is building. And before you will know it, God forbid, you start having the issue of kidnapping. And it's and, already I happening. Mean, kidnapping is I already mean, happening where are we in the problem state. So that's my fear. So I want to appeal to the political class to reduce the tension, to douse tension and allow peace and allow voters to just go there and vote for whoever will emerge. All right. The governor of the state. Hello, good morning. Welcome to the People's Parliament. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, parliamentarian. Go ahead. Yes, good morning, Frank. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, yeah, thank you. I am... Mayor you know, Solomon calling in for me before Asutan. Well, talking about the myriads of litigations uh, during election period, what do we expect short from that? When politics, when politicians have taken politics to be a money making venture, because they, that's why they invest a lot, knowing fully that when they get in there, they will maximize profit. Get what is whatever they invested in one way or the other. So this trend will continue. How can we stop it? Except there's a drastic review of our constitution, thereby reducing all all financial entitlement accruing to political offices, even including the age, the fiction of age of politicians that have to contest, like in the civil states, applicable in the civil states. Allowances, entitlement drastically reduced. Then that is where we have less litigations, less accusations, less fighting, less killing. As, as, aside from that, we should be conscious of the fact that politicians have taken politics to be a money-making venture. That's why all this is coming up in place. Now, secondly, that aside, I want to use this medium also to call on the Appointment State Ethical and Additional Reorganization Commission, ECOM, for them to call with jingles to reoriented us, uh, 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 the public, most especially the youth. It, it shouldn't be the part of election that the youth should take to the part of asking aspirations, insults, making in, uh, defamatory comments on our leaders, on our elders. Please, I think it is very necessary for that commission, that agency, to rise up now and begin with this kind of sensitization so that we will not continue to hit up the policy by our comments and our actions. Thank you Thank very you. much, Parliamentarian. We appreciate And yes, let's take some social media comments. Parliamentarian, the real Christian says, good morning, People's Parliament. Good morning to you. Parliamentarian Emmanuel Ante says, the People's Parliament, good morning, Mr. Speaker and the analysts in the House. The Minister of Information, Uncle Lai Mohammed, should please respect his old age and stop saying that the planned protest by Nigerian Labour Congress and TEC in solidarity with the striking university unions in Nigeria is illegal. The Minister of Labour, Senator Chris Nguyen, should allow the Minister of Education, Adamu, to try his best to lead the negotiation this time around, as directed by Mr. President, provided we see the needed result. NLC and TEC are the parent body of the affected unions. It's solidarity forever. Parliamentarian Chiko Diri Obasi says, Good morning, Mr. Speaker. I want to talk about the let's try going on in a higher institution one. Okay, I guess you wanted to mention the strike. 
going on in the higher institution. The federal government has failed. National grade house collapsed over five times. No gas, no PMS. I believe that is okay. This is promoting your political uh, candidate, so I have to skip that. Parliamentarian Uzo Francis Namani says, uh, I'm Uzo Francis watching live from Makunze in Enugu State. Good morning, Mr. Speaker. The intermittent collapse in National Park Grid is very unfortunate. There is a need to stabilize power supply to economic activities. Thanks and God bless Uzo Francis Namani from Amakunze. Thank you for joining us. And Parliamentarian Henry Uwa says, Good morning, Mr. Speaker. The court is supposed to be non-partisan, but now the judges and even the entire court could be bought over. On water bill, it is a good development. If the government can provide water, most Nigerians are willing to pay. Just electricity, water, they say, is live. Parliamentarian Uden Magaibu says, Mr. Speaker, on the political court cases in Akwaibom State, looking at certificate saga of Pastor Moino, the simple, though rhetorical question is, if there is no issue in that YX certificate, what is the need of hiring seven senior advocates of Nigeria to defend a result that ordinarily should have just been shown to the public? The same way certificate of return was published and shown everywhere on social media and print media. Parliamentarian Udeme Udo says, Good morning, Mr. Speaker. A Kwaibum State Water Company should be scrapped out of existence. If we had a water company, the rural areas wouldn't be suffering for basic amenities as water. Ngiga is saying that NLC protest is another way of campaigning for Peter Opi, as reported by DSS. NLC should go on on violent protests. I beg your pardon, we cannot urge the NLC to go on a violent protest. That will be instigating and heating up the polity, which is against the constitutional requirement of all Nigerians. Parliamentarian Luke Umeike says, Good morning, Mr. Speaker. Water pill, water is live. The problem with our government signing a bill is one. Implementation is another different thing. The problem with our leaders or government is insincerity. They talk too much and do very little. They struggle and do all they can to get the first office because they are okay. They ignore their responsibilities and leave the poor citizens to the mercy of God. And then coming from parliamentarian Luke Umweke. And let's talk to some more calls before uh, we head back to the floor of the house. Hello, good morning. Welcome to the People's Parliament. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good morning. Good morning. Thank God it's Friday, Mr. Speaker. This is Friday on a Friday for me, Welcome. And good morning to all the guests in the house. Good morning, Friday good morning. on a Friday. Speaker, let me quickly talk about the forgery and the sophisticated saga. Uh, both in the state and even today in the national, because I've heard that uh, even the candidate of APC has, has the same case problem. So I want to plead with the judiciary. They should speed in these very cases. Even if they want to fix the case three days in a week, I want to plead with them so that they should do so. Because I believe that at the maybe 15 August, the INEC portal will be closed, not to substitute or to do any other thing again. So I want to plead with the judiciary. And secondly, Mr. Speaker, this uh, is your neighbor, as they call us, they want to remain anonymous. Uh, this call, Kpo uh, Masquerade, is disturbing people very well. So it's not too good for this, uh, at least this is a civilized uh, time. People have freedom to go where they want to go. If you like Masquerade, you join. If you don't like, you don't think it's, uh, it is very good for them to disturb other people. Even students who are still in the secondary school, they will come to and hide somewhere. You want to urinate maybe in the midnight. They cast you, tie you, rope, draw you, beat you, tear cloth. That is what is happening even here in my village here in Ibionibum. So it is very much alarming. So let the government do something about it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Parliamentarian. I will take just about two more uh, comments from a social media platform. Uh, Parliamentarian Proven Yabira Basi says, Good morning, Mr. Speaker. On the issue of court cases, left and right is a way of wasting our state resources, money raised for the development of the state and creating jobs for the youth in the state. Uh, that's the size of the comments we can take for today. Hello, good morning. Welcome to the People's Parliament. Hello, good morning, Mr. Speaker. Yeah, and all your guests. Thank you for having me. Please Major I'm calling from Steven. Good morning, Mr. Speaker. Uh, let me just, uh, on the issue of the PDP in Akwaibom, I think I would just advise the PDP 
instead of them losing their economy, uh, losing being participating in 2023 election, I think it would be better for them to replace their candidate of with all these uh, problems that they are passing through. Then, uh, quickly, on the issue of the water bill, it's a speak, I think there are some laws that our leaders will just bring and it to save as a problem or to make life to be more hard for the citizens. But I, I always hear about the issue of water ministry in, in Aquaibu. I don't know whether that uh, a ministry is still existing. Thank God the, the PDP candidate was in that uh, ministry. Mr. Sila, the last time I saw water in this Aquaibu was during the administration of uh, Abraham Victor. Sir. So I don't know what they are trying to do. They finally, Mr. Speaker, before I go, please allow me to talk about the issue of the PAPC uh, unveiling their uh, candidate this day before yesterday. Mr. Speaker, I don't know whether you, I, I'm sure you agree with me that the reason APC delayed uh, unveiling their candidates was maybe because they tell all that supposed to the castle, the uh, APC, uh, the bishop, maybe the man delayed. Because, Mr. Speaker, you can't just tell me that those people were the authentic uh, uh, clergymen. They look like a, a repentant bandit. What are we saying? So we need to read the right thing at the right time. Uh, the, the APC candidate should not be uh, uh, desperate to become the president. It should be the will of the people. If you stand like it and sideline the Christian, what do you want? What about when you come into power? We should learn from this. Thank you for having me. I'm Major Obama, calling from Syria. Thank you very much, Major, for joining us. And that would be our last caller for today. Let me come back to you, Patrick. Um, there's one issue left on our motion today. Uh, Becker strike, Aquaibon Becker's and the state floor meal. We don't have enough time, so we'll probably will have to just talk briefly about it. I know that in 2019, the Aquaibon state government, uh, in partnership during the, the, the government, the private, uh, privatization process brought in a flour mill, King's flour mill, to Aquaibon state. But there have been reports in the, on the streets of you that that particular industry is not functioning. So I, I want to ask, are you aware of the, the, the recent developments around the industry? Because I tried this morning reaching out to their contact persons and uh, nobody picked up. Uh, 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 Mr. Speaker, before I looked at that uh, flower mill issue, I think uh, I need to add something to the, the litigation going on in our political uh, hemisphere right now in Aquaibo State. There's a lot of intellectual hypocrisy that has rocked our polity right now in Aquaibo State, and this, some of these things need to be corrected. Uh, particularly the case of Akan Okon versus Umoeno. It is not Akan Okon versus the states. So when you see in the words of uh, the legendary Royepo, dirty job artists trying to paint the state in a bad color that they are using state resources. How can you use state resources to prosecute or defend a case that is on, on, on uh, a particular person? They, they might even have said maybe they are using party resources. It would have been reasonable enough. But for dirty job artists to go around painting the state in bad color, that they are using the state resources to defend an individual is absurd. We, we These are some of the things that has, you know, given people this false uh, uh, this, they serve the gullible these messages and then you get the people all riled up for nothing the case is between Akanokon and Pastor Moeno not Akanokon versus the state so the state cannot in all amount of honesty and reality begin to peel for the, uh, the, uh, the state cover to defend Akanomo and then let's, let's defend uh, Moeno as, as it seems now the issue of uh, Mr. Etem uh, Anyeka and I can seeking to join the suit. You, it was inconclusive. It, it, it was struck off yesterday. It was struck off. Yesterday. It was struck off. You didn't say that. Yeah, it was struck off because in like Mary, there was no reason for him to join join the case. And then the case between Akan Okon and Moino has been adjourned. Has been adjourned. Now they've not. They, they did. They say will be communicated to, to the, the, the parties. parties. So I just hope maybe. It's not going to be like the lawyers put it in a die as the case may be. So we need to correct all this impression. And I also want to say here that even though politics, some people say politics is not a career, but we have pro uh, uh, practical, professional politicians like it is. Now, the issue, as a matter of fact, I've said it on my platform a couple of times, that they should begin to have uh, lawyers. They should begin to have PR uh, specialists, they should begin to have political strategies, they should begin to have journalists in the retinue of their staff because when you don't have these professionals in the retinue of your staff, you become uh, bushmeat for people like Barista Guinea because what is happening is a result of ignorance. 
clear ignorance. These people have not taken time to study the constitution because of their schedule. They have not taken time to study the electoral art because of their schedule. Now, employ people like lawyers, journalists who will take time to study these things and advise you appropriately so so that you avoid all these litigations that is making uh, making the whole place look messy and all not and then you see a whole lot of uh, people young people on the street on social media who are virtually unemployed they're trying to get uh, noticed by activating their in the words of uh, legendary repo dirty job artistry the court does not work the way you think it works in the court, you don't just go because they say you don't have seventy k. Then you just bring a seventy k on social media out of Facebook and say I have seventy k. That's not how the court works. The court, you see, the, the the logo for the court is a woman that is blind. The court operates on fact. And if I might, if you recall, there was a one interview that Barrister Mike Igini gave and said the APC fraudulently. I want to use the word fraudulently. Yeah, fraudulently reportedly. Yes, reportedly fraudulently uh, obtained a judgment. So it means that you can obtain a judgment fraudulently. What does that mean? It means the court works on facts, and your ability to twist the fact or present your facts wins you the case, not the truth. So what the, the Pastor Omar and team is doing is the right thing. The uh, Akarokon's team took the case to court. So you don't go there with uh, with your cassock. You don't go to the court with your cassock. You go to the court with lawyers, and you must look for the best kind of lawyers. And so I don't think uh, there's any uh, people coming to say Pastor Imano should come to social media and present his uh, his certificate. Uh, it's not a juvenile game of uh, truth or dare. So that aside, coming back to the issue of the flour flour mill in in Aquabo State, I think what one of the like I said, this administration has not been properly um, marketed. I want to use the word marketed professionally here as a, as a case may be because there are a whole lot of people i don't want to call it tribe there are a whole lot of people expatriate in aquarium who said who have taken advantage of this flour mill they are busy coming around taking this flour mill out they register with this company they are they are they are, they are distributors they are marketers but we we have come to a situation like we said that we have because uh without sounding antagonistic those who are saddled with responsibility of promoting this government have not really promoted this government the way they have promoted this government so that is what is happening so the government is ill promoted out there the people are not really really carried along like the way they should be carried along, should because, be carried along. yes because this this uh, flower mill as far as i'm concerned from the last uh inspection i did personally it was functional i don't know whether it's not functional today because i've not been there in the last one or two months but I know before now it was functional. And I've seen people who have registered here who are moving products out of it. So uh, I think the the, the 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 agencies responsible for for carrying the people along with government activities should do more. Should do more. They are doing what they are doing, but I think they should do more because at this point it's about what the people want to know about the Patrick, government. Patrick, uh, let me just come in there. The King's Flower Mill, the Civil Liberty Organization, where I'm the chairman, carried out a tour. Of the state government seeing the governor's project we did project tracking for three months and we went to the king's flower mill it's functional it's functioning it's working just like what you are saying when we went there the clo team were surprised that those who come to buy this this uh, flower are those from outside, outside the state from the north from the west from the east coming to buy the flower and then here in aquabom we are here saying it's not functioning. It's not functioning. We are here asking who is the ownership. Yeah. We are questioning why is it be why must it be in Ona? Why must it be in Suso area? Instead of going to cash in to get the flour and get this, we even, we even had to eat the bread, bake with the flour with the flour. We went to the syringe factory, it's functioning. We went to the plywood factory, it's working. We went to all other industries that the government has attracted. I'm saying this as CLO in Aquaibo. We, we came up and we, we, we did a public. Forum where we now presented our report is there in the public. You will see it, and it's working. So if the bakers are going on strike because of lack of flour, are they, have they been able to approach the how 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 do they have they have they gone to get the flour? Have they applied? Have they approached? Have they gone there to get flour? Or is it that because I know that gas is also part of what they are even asking for, yes. not just only flour. Yes. They also need gas and the high cost of running this flour. I remember some time ago, I think during the uh, I think during the last. Uh, the last assembly under right honorable on uh, look right on level mark he said proposed a bill on bakery i don't know whether that bill that bill was killed because of some political interest that came in the bill was sponsored at the same time with a bill with the anti open grazing bill that uh, was brought by right on level uh, so that, so those two bills were killed because of political interest if we have a law that regulates 
the activities of bakers and then also provide avenue for them to get loans it will also help the state in making breads uh, affordable and available in the state all right. i think i think they should yeah, for me sorry mr speaker the 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 war in ukraine has actually uh, affected we know, uh, the we, know we know so that i think let's let's activate that cassava bread that uh, the good Lord United administration try to introduce i, I mean we are pretty, we, have, we can produce cassava here locally and i think for us that should be where we should be looking at uh, I, I thought we were going to talk about the commercialization of the NDDC, but NNPC. Yes, but that, that is not, something that we've tied us. down yes. for next next week, and uh, we'll be dealing extensively on that. And of course, apart from the in-house parliamentarians, we'll also be having an expert in the oil and gas sector joining us live in the studio uh, to give more details to the the issue that we'll be trashing out. But I'd like to thank you both for coming to the studio today to make justice to the different motions on the floor of the House. And to all the parliamentarians who have joined us, I appreciate you. The People's Parliament is your parliament and you have uh, the ultimate responsibility. You are the most important personality. And I commend you for all the efforts and contributions that you have been making 